Hey everyone. <laughs> Welcome to an episode of Michaela's World. Um, this is our, our dearly departed episode. So, you know, we're we're gonna have a funeral for the ones that we have lost, we've loved and lost and hate, you know, everything. So I thought I would come on here today as I'm going to release this on Wednesday and give you guys a special treat of a live stream since I don't live stream like ever. I did it once with the Alien Theorist boys and then that's it. So I don't know. I hope my audio is okay for you guys. I'm also recording it on like another platform. This video isn't even being recorded. So <laughs> so here's to it. We are gathered here today to mourn the losses of our loved ones and our lovers past. This is about, I wish I would have brought pictures because I could expose them all. <laughs> so let's take a minute to talk about the men that I have completely annihilated since starting this podcast. Let's start with the first one, Chicago Boy. Yes, I completely annihilated him by bringing his ex-girlfriend on the podcast. Not only that, but I became best friends with said ex-girlfriend and plotted revenge against him. Now, we have holy shit <laughs> don't scare me like that <laughs> it's their funeral tonight so i have plotted revenge against chicago boy with blair as i will be traveling to chicago once this whole pandemic is over and i'm gonna go scare the shit out of him then we have Who's next? The paramedic. He called me crazy, so I told his boss what he does with extra supplies. Hmm. <sighs> oh, Mr. Paramedic. Sorry for your loss. Next, we have Sergeant Frost, a man who thought he was so good at everything. And... Let me tell you, he wasn't. So I guess what we can say about him is that, I don't, honestly, I don't even know where to start. Pompous. I need a dictionary, like a thesaurus. <laughs> but this man just, he just seemed like, he, if he was dating a woman, he would, you know, expect everything from them and give almost nothing in return. Like, so you would say, like, I, I said to him, I'm not ready to have sex with you. I'm not really interested in having sex with you right now. But maybe in the future, we can work towards that. It had been like our fucking second date that I had to say this to him because I was just not ready to have sex with him. What's the fucking problem with that? Like, are you, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> Leave me the fuck alone. So I just fucking annihilated him. And I actually, um, on my other computer, I have the audio and visual from a live stream it's not really a live stream. It was a Zoom video call on New Year's Eve where I just trolled the fuck out of him. He tried to, he literally tried to make me come over to his house with his roommates and like spend the night during, in the mid, like mid fucking COVID. Like this is January of this year. Was it? Yeah, it was this year. It was wild. Like I, you can't go out partying if like with my dumb job that I had when I was working at the warehouse, if I was caught partying and out in areas like doing things that I shouldn't be doing, 
I would have been, I had to fucking isolate for two weeks. I wasn't even allowed to work. I couldn't do that. Thank God I wasn't in school. I mean, like, if I was, at least I'd had something to do in that two weeks. But shit. Like, ugh, I don't know. Anyway, enough about Sergeant Frost. We're done with him. Now, there's a man, a man who I dated this year, Mr. President. Now, Mr. President, I hope you're getting some severe, intense therapy after that episode that I posted about you, and I know you listened to it, you you would have needed therapy after dating me. So, saw you in town the other day, looking shittier than ever. <laughs> and then there was the incel event. Oh, crypto farmer. <sighs> Calling everybody norms. Like... You guys are all normies. I guess we're all normies, even though I fucking totally have way more crypto shit than he does, and he has no idea. But that's beyond, or besides the point. I can't speak, but whatever. It's fine. So, as I sit here in my kitchen today, I think about Crypto Farmer and all the shit that he did and how I was just absolutely fucking done. This man stressed me out to the point that I was going into anaphylactic shock. I didn't even have to eat. I was just constantly having allergic reactions because I was allergic to him. Have you ever been allergic to a person? Honestly, have you ever been allergic to a person? Have you, The minute they fucking touch you, you break out into hives, you get rashy and you swell up, your tongue gets swelled, your throat tightens up and you're like, eh, anaphylaxis, where's my EpiPen? Like, what the fuck? Honestly. <sighs> Just a moment of silence. For a man who I'm pretty sure was a virgin. Dear Crypto Farmer, I hate you so much. Now, there are others that I have completely annihilated, but my absolute favorite, the man that I love to drag the absolute most, Mr. Tree Man, hailing from Manitoba, outside of, on the south side of Riding Mountain National Park. That's about all I can say without getting sued. Anyway, so Tree Man and I, when I was 16, he asked me out on a date. Did we go on that date? No. Did we talk a lot? Yeah. Did we spend a lot of time on Skype? Yep. Yeah, yeah. You know, it was, so, it was okay. You know, and then eight years go by and I break up with the pilot. And we start seeing each other. So we're not like, we're just like hanging out with each other like friends. But I guess he thought it was more like dates. Although it took him a whole year to kiss me. Then after he kissed me, which I talked about on this podcast. Then he pressured me to have sex with him. Ah, uh, yes, the pilot. Yes, yeah. Not my best choice. <laughs> so this man pressures me to have sex with him. Now, I'm like, how can I use this against him? How can I create leverage from this? Because that's how my mind works. I'm like, okay, if a man is going to pressure me to do something, I'm going to find some way to blackmail him for it and use it to manipulate him. Because I, what do I have to lose? Nothing. I'm, I'll have sex with you, sure. But I'm going to fucking manipulate this shit out of you. So, <laughs> good fucking luck. Anyway, so, Tree Man and I do the deed. And then I have the best dirt ever on him. Because at this point, I've seen him, like, fucking naked. So, I've seen every part of him, and I grew up with him. I know a lot about him. 
So we go snowboarding and everything. Like we met up at the hill and one of my friends, Sam, was there and it was good. It was a good time. It was fun. Um, This summer, my friend was at a local bar in his hometown and he was there. I can't tell you how much I cried that night because I knew that this was going to happen. Although I already kind of knew I needed that like push because I already knew that this thing was never going to fucking happen. Everything was going downhill. Like I fucking talk shit about him on the podcast. It's never going to fucking work. (laughs) So I'm like, okay, I'm just going to have my little cry session tonight. It's going to be fine. She's at the party with Tree Man. Sorry, she's at the bar with Tree Man first. Because he happens to be at the bar with a friend. And then they, like, connect. So then she brings him back to a party. And then what he does is he um he kisses her. And he goes after her and tries to sleep with her. Yeah. You don't fucking go after your friends with benefits all their friends, the person you're fucking, like, continuously, you don't go after their friends. That's a big fucking no-no. But apparently, I'm the one in the wrong. I'm the crazy one. Okay, well, I mean, I already knew I was crazy, so let's be honest. That's me. (laughs) I have a fucking podcast. Of course, I'm batshit crazy. Damn. So, After I confront him about this shit, he gets all butthurt and upset. I don't see what the problem is. So then I hear from a little birdie that he crashed their camping, like, thing that they had. A planned event with a group of friends. He came and crashed with another girl. And he basically has a different girl in his bed every single night. How does he do this? I don't know, because he's like a fucking six. So, and it's definitely not his dick. I can tell you that. So, I don't even know. I literally had to explain to him what he was doing wrong. And I had Chris, like, I was literally texting Chris and Lindsay about this. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, what? And I remember because I was at Sam's house that week when I was trying to like explain what was going on. I was house sitting and I'm like, what the fuck is the shit? Like, but it's okay because I know everything. So, okay. So I cried for like a half an hour, three months ago. (laughs) I'm good now. (laughs) On to the next victim. And here's to all the other men that I have completely ripped their hearts out. <laughs> Looks like I'm having PTSD flashbacks. Mm, it is. It's that I am having PTSD flashbacks. I need to freaking like take a lorazepam after this. I mean, like, I should be taking one anyway since I was in the hospital this morning. But I'm alive. (laughs) Oh, fuck. Some of these men that I have dated. Let's take a moment of silence for how absolutely fucking horrible they are and how I hope all of their relationships end terribly and poorly. And maybe some other shit that I don't want to say out loud. (laughs) We'll have our moment of silence now because I need some water. Okay, that's good enough. I'm a thirsty bitch. Out with the old, in with the new. So here's what's going on with me now. I accidentally stole somebody's heart. Uh pilot mechanic from Manitoba. Uh, I I regret everything. I did not mean to steal this man's heart. 
but it is so hard when you are this cute and this funny and this fucking crazy and like what I mean funny like you get me fucking wasted I'm hilarious I'm a fucking hoot of course I know I'm funny because like everyone's pissing themselves laughing when I go out and I'm like yeah because I do dumb shit or I say crazy shit I I can't speak anyway <laughs> so I accidentally stole this man's heart on the first date as I got him wasted in my apartment with, uh, uh <laughs> no, uh, with, with, uh, Susie. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Susie Q. <laughs> I almost said her name. <laughs> I have to be careful. Okay. I've been working on this. So we're all drinking in my apartment and I fucking absolutely just he, he, I probably didn't even have to get him drunk to make him fall in love with me. Fall in love with me sober. Fuck knows I have to deal with that all the time. I have been, I'm so fucking busy right now because it's, let's go on a date. Let's go to the movies. Let's go to the bar. Let's go for dinner. And I'm like, I need to make up excuses to not go out. So I'm keeping myself busy. Tonight I avoided a date because I'm like, oh, sorry, I have plans. I have plans. I can't go out. What are your plans? I, I've got, I've got a date with some of my friends right now. Meaning I'm going to do my live stream tonight because I don't want to fucking go out. Yeah. 10 out of 10 siren call. The siren call is strong with me. And it's a problem. It really is. Because when you have 4,000 Tinder matches and you've only been on the app for a few months, that's an issue. But I mean, I do swipe right for everybody. Because I have no fucking cares in this world. So with that, hmm, I don't know what to do. You know, like, do my fridge is now going off. You guys can probably hear it. That's what happens when you record in your kitchen. The lighting's the best here. I have the most space and you don't see my stack of computers. It's very embarrassing. Okay. But I don't know what to do about this guy that has fallen in love with me. Well, there's more than one. There is definitely more than one right now that are just like totally fucking hounding me. And I just, I don't know what to do. Like, it's dangerous dating me. You want to date me? Okay. I have a podcast where I talk about my life, specifically my love life, and I fucking rate men. So, is it dangerous? Yeah, absolutely. But, okay, so what I can't get through my head is... Why? 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 Why do these men want to date me? What is so appealing about me other than my face and my ass? What? Like, what is it? My smarts? Because I'm sure it's fucking hell smarter than half of these men. Absolutely. I work in IT. <laughs> of course. I speak like how many freaking languages? You know? Later, Gator. Yeah, I just, I just don't fucking know. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to stop this. Oh, it's just, you know, it's just bullshit. I am so done with dating. I'm just, I'm just done with it. All the expectations, all the, oh, all the bad sex. Ugh, all the gross dicks. No. One time, I fucking recently, fucking recently, a man tried to insert his dick inside of me. And I looked at his dick and I literally dry heaved. I was like, that's not going inside of me. 
Oh, for fuck's sakes. <sighs> Fucking gross. <laughs> and just just today, okay, while I'm fucking coming out of the hospital, fresh after having an anaphylactic reaction, you know, shot up with epinephrine, <laughs> all hopped up on roids, I get a text, hey, baby, you want to hang out tonight? No, I, I never spoke about this man before. I've never even spoke to him. I've never even looked at his profile. So I pull up his profile. Solid two out of ten. Mmm. And he's going to call me baby. Mmm. Yum. <laughs> Please just penetrate me. Like, come on. So, as, you know, as I would do. Thanks, but no. Left it at that. I don't know how I'm going to make this to a half an hour. I ran out of shit to say no. <laughs> that was my plan. I could play some music. Make you guys cry a little bit. <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. So um, I have to figure out what to do. Coming up on December 10th, I have this guy coming to visit me for a weekend. And mm, my mom wants to come down that weekend too. And I'm trying to figure out what the fuck to do. And I'm like... Like, I don't know if I want to have him over. I don't, like, I, I really don't know. I don't, I don't even know if I want to, you know, what's it called? Hang out, even. Like, I'm bored. I truly am bored. The conversations suck. They're boring. I want to have a good conversation. I want to talk. I want to talk about deep shit. I want to talk about fucking aliens and conspiracies and like fucking ancient civilizations and physics and the string theory. Oh my God. I want to talk about all this nerdy shit. Trees, bugs, plants. I don't know. Podcasting. New technology, movies. I want some depth. I need depth to a person and I'm not finding any depth. I'm going to fucking yeet myself off my fucking balcony because I cannot handle the men in Saskatchewan. Nobody can fucking carry a good conversation anymore. No one, everybody seems to be lacking conversation skills that I fucking talk to. Like my friends, no fucking problem. They all, we all talk, we talk about everything and anything. We get into the dirty, dirty, dirty details. I don't give a shit, right? Like I'll talk about anything. You want me to explain the uterus to you? Absolutely. fucking lutely I got you covered, babe. You know, like it's not that hard. So I'm just like, Totally fucking enraged because what the fuck is going on with this world? It's a funeral to my fucking sanity. I have lost my fucking mind. This is now a funeral for my sanity because I have none. I am completely fucking insane. Ugh. Somebody fucking help me. My One of my best friends is out here getting fucking engaged to a woman he had just met because it's arranged. And here I am, 26 years old, single as fuck, sitting in my fucking living room in an apartment that I live in all by myself, doing fuck all, because this is what I do every single day. My hair is wilding out, just like me. Hey, how was your day? Great, I almost died and then I slept and worked for three hours and then fucking did nothing. Honestly. What are you up to this weekend? Not you, babe. <laughs> the shit that comes out of my mouth. Is completely unfiltered. So I um 
I can't even, I can't even explain myself. I'm sorry. Sorry, guys. I'm really fucking weird. So welcome to my world. <laughs> anyway, there's a train going by. I think that's my cue to maybe in this podcast. So just a quick 30 minute live stream funeral. So you guys don't have to suffer. My hair is wilding out. So whatever. I don't give a shit. Come at me. Okay, you guys know the drill. All right. I'm not on my normal YouTube channel right now because I'm not allowed to fucking live stream there. So I have to do it here on Mickers 101. But you can follow the podcast for random ass live streams like this one. Um, I think it's called Michaela's World. I don't even fucking know. It's probably in my show notes. Check out H Hour Apparel. Get some cute sweaters. Chris loves that shit from there. So do I. So try it out. I think it's Michaela 20 for 20% off. And detour sunglasses. Get your sunnies. Get your ski goggles. 20% off. Michaela's World 20. All right. You guys have a great fucking night. Thanks for coming to hang out with me and listen to me bitch about my fucking ex-boyfriends and how I hate them all. Because they're all pieces of shit. And I know we're only at 26 minutes and I fucking hate myself for it. But you know what? That's the best that we're going to get fucking get right now. Because I should probably go to bed because it's nine o'clock and I have another live stream. I'm pretty sure that's starting. So maybe I'm going to join into that one. Troll a little bit. <laughs> I'm going to try to grab some screenshots from this because honestly, the faces that I make are just so fucking funny. I should be live streaming because I am my, the faces. That is what makes it so funny. Cause you're like, what the fuck is she doing with her face? <laughs> anyway, you guys have a great night. I'll catch you next, next, uh, catch you next Monday. Maybe a live stream. Maybe not. Maybe a live stream this weekend. If I don't go home. Okay, bye.